What is good, Cloudy people? Welcome back to the channel where we go over rapper marketing, rap vlogs, and funny rap analysis videos. You have just clicked on a video where we will be going over proven marketing strategies that past and large artists have used to blow themselves up. Specifically today, we'll be going over the internet money strategy. I will be going over a brief intro later on. But first, if you haven't already, make sure to click the link in the description for the pump plan, which details how Lil Pump blew up. But do that after this video because you won't want to miss anything. And if you don't want to miss any future content make sure to hit subscribe and like the video while you're at it because any piece of this gold material that you're getting from these videos might be the reason you blow up let's get into it Before delving straight into the step-by-step -step process that Taz Taylor, Nick Mira, and Internet Money as a whole utilize to create stars overnight, I wanna give you a brief introduction of the strategy and the people behind it so you can really see how potent this strategy is. I would be willing to argue that Taz Taylor and Nick Mira could really blow up a block of cheese without even dropping any music. For a short period, I might add. It wouldn't obviously stick, but they could really blow up any artist they wanted just because of their connects and their pull in the industry. I also wanna make sure everybody knows that this is not a confirmed strategy by Taz Taylor or Nick Miro or anyone in internet money records it's really completely based off my own observations and just watching a few of the artists that they've put on just watching their Instagram accounts grow from like a thousand followers to 200k in Ian Dior's case to name a few more artists that are involved in the internet money records the first one is juice world that everybody knows lucid dreams and all girls are the same were both produced by Nick Mira and launched by internet money records to jumpstart juice world's career and more recent ones include ian dior as i just mentioned poor stacy prada baby young garzy and the list goes on the internet money strategy varies greatly from the lil pump plan that i detailed in last video in that it is much more organic and there isn't much money that's put into the strategy although there is but i'll explain that part later but just know that it predicates almost entirely from taz taylor and nick mira's status in the music industry as well as their reputation just with the overall fans of internet money and you might not have the success or accomplishments however the strategies can be used in your own career you'll just have to circumvent certain things and use similar strategies but not the exact same now that we've given a brief intro into the internet money strategy let's finally get into it because i know y'all are ready to use it on your own career the internet money strategy is a five step process that i believe is one of the most effective strategies that an artist can use nowadays in the music industry especially given soundcloud and all of these social media platforms. First step is the foundation. I know that many strategies probably go off this, but it's not really explicitly stated because it's always just assumed and nobody actually goes over it. But I think internet money utilizes a foundation in their first step in that internet money looks for an artist with already good music and a pretty decent aesthetic that has already accumulated their own buzz or fan base in their local area. I personally believe that Taz Taylor and Nick Mira base their choices of artists that they work with on the trends and who's popping at the moment so basically juice world right now is huge with the emo music or the sad music whatever you want to call it so they're really going for that sound as music is a business so they want to make money and you know play off of the current trends what this means for someone like you who really isn't getting signed by a label yet is hone and develop your craft and aesthetic because your look is almost or even more important than your music because of social media and everything before putting a lot of money into your music career because you don't want to start wasting money on things that aren't working so you want to use your social media your instagram posts and your soundcloud songs to test what's working what sounds are getting more reposts and what pictures are getting more likes and then once you start finding which ones are performing better then double down on it and then continue testing until you've pretty much perfected what your fan base and future fan bases will appeal to <laughs> Step number two, rebranding. Taz Taylor is actually mentioned in an interview with Kyle Beats that he controls most of the artistry behind the artists that he works with. Building and developing an artist. Yeah. That, that's like the shit that I got to take on every day. So like Ian Dior, for instance, like I'm the one in charge of Ian Dior putting out music. I'm the one in charge of like what songs that he's doing. Him having like a, a follow up song or hits or making sure this shit's streaming well, like how they present themselves to the public through like Instagram and like styling, like all that shit, how they dress 
voice, how they look, how they yeah, talk, yeah, yeah. their image, everything. Before we get any industry plan accusations of the artists that he manages or executive produces, just know that every single major artist has a team that does all these things for them. A stylist, executive producer, songwriters, things like that. They just don't put it out in the open because that would completely give up the integrity of the artist. But nobody in the industry actually cares. And many of the times, this means that internet money changes a little bit of the brand of the artist before they start blowing up, optimizing some of their things like buying them the right clothes and giving them better production. This includes what the artist wears, what songs the artist puts out, what types of pictures he posts on IG, what type of tweets he says. That's why a lot of these artists are saying depressing things because it's just in. And I'm not saying some of these artists aren't depressed or have sad thoughts. It's just a lot of it is a hoax. And this is all to prepare the artist to create the highest likelihood that once Taz Taylor, Nick Mira, and Internet Money Records start promoting the artist, converting those people into fans of this artist. Additionally, I have seen on several occasions the artist actually changing their name on the recommendation of Taz Taylor in order to fit the brand more cohesively or get more exposure. For example, Ian Dior used to be called Michael Omo, which was his real name. Poor Stacy used to be called Lito Zantana, and Prada Baby used to be called Young Joe or Young J.O. With the name changes, if you go back to the old Twitters and Instagrams of these artists, you can see a drastic change in aesthetic and sound even. The production and their whole brand is just much higher quality. And again, the main goal of all of this rebranding is to increase the likelihood of people converting into fans or followers when their name starts getting more exposure through internet money records outlets. Now what you can do, the rebranding step in the strategy, is study the greats. And this is for anything you do really. This can relate to sports, music, anything. But regarding music, what types of pictures are the greats posting? What are they wearing? What type of production does the song have? And also make sure your name is unique and appealing by nature. So when people see that name, they want to click on it because honestly, your name might be the issue. You might not have an as appealing name as you really think you do. And this was a joke before when I was talking about Prada Baby in one of my videos, but consider having a designer brand in your name. I don't know. But don't make it super cliche like Lil Designer Bag. Prada Baby and Ian Dior are prime examples of utilizing a designer brand name in their artist name. Step number three in internet money strategy to blow up an artist is the organic push. Internet money records and all of its producers already have a massive following, so what's really the point of paying anyone else, at least at the beginning, to break an artist when they can essentially just do it for free by themselves? More specifically, Taz Taylor has 75,000 followers on Instagram and 100,000 on Twitter. Moreover, Nick Mira has 134,000 IG followers and has about 60,000 Twitter followers. So already, with both of them pushing an artist, they can get them to at least say 10K on Instagram. And these are super engaged followers, I might add, that will basically ride or die for anything Nick Mira or Taz Taylor say or affiliate themselves with. This is similar to Cole Bennett in which every time he drops a music video with an artist, they basically think this artist is next up. I think it's to a lesser degree, but there's something to be said that whenever Nick Mira and Taz Taylor start working with a new artist, the fans are already priming themselves for this next artist to blow up. Now, to begin the organic organic push. They use this rebranded name or new artist name and start changing all of the social media handles that the artist has to the new name. Next in the organic push, Taz Taylor and Nick Mira will start a series of nonchalant IG stories and tweets where they'll just mention the new artist but not really say anything about their given role. And this sparks curiosity in the internet money fans and again, it's priming them for this new artist to possibly be the next up artist. Shortly after this artist will drop a song with Nick Mira or Taz Taylor, anybody internet money records producing it, and it will get reposted by Taz Taylor and Nick Mira, as well as their network of SoundCloud repost channels, which will generally get them 50 to 100,000 plays within the first week. And in the process, they'll gain a couple thousand followers of people who are gonna continually check out their music. And again, they'll be super engaged. When I witnessed how Prada Baby was starting to come up, he had 3,000 followers on Instagram at the very beginning of their organic push. And with this 3,000 followers, he was getting like over a thousand likes on a single Instagram post, which is crazy. Typically, the average influencer on Instagram on the high end gets 10% engagement 
and a thousand likes out of 3,000 is about 33%. This process then repeats on a weekly to bi-weekly basis to the point where they've gotten like a decent fan base under their belt. Now what you can do that is similar to this step in the process is to collaborate with as many friends and influencers and rappers as possible. I know many of you don't have friends who are Taz Taylor or Nick Mira or most of you actually. So it's going to be hard to really boost yourselves that much. However, in collaborating with as many people as possible, you're exposing yourself to as many audiences as possible to check out your music. <laughs> Another thing you can do is join a collective of artists or start a collective of artists, kind of like XSX Tentacion and Members Only or Trippy Red's 1400 or really any rapper that's big right now had a collective behind them that pushed their music for them or they all pushed each other. There's usually an artist at the forefront just because that's the artist that catches on. But honestly, that's the best way to do it because not only are you pushing yourself, you've got six other people pushing you as well and you're doing the same thing for them and it's just an exponential growth. The fourth step in the internet money strategy is similar to the pump plan in that they use channel placements and affiliation. And since it is in both strategies, this really just shows how essential it is in a marketing strategy for any artist. In my opinion, YouTube is way more important than SoundCloud. To get discovered, I mean, look at some of these artists like 6 9 and Famous Dex who don't even have a SoundCloud account. The key concept behind this step in the process is to promote your music videos and songs on a channel many consecutive times times until that fan base of the channel becomes more familiar with your artist name and finally clicks on it to check your music out because most of the time they're not going to click on the song the first time they see your name in their case it doesn't hurt that they have Nick Mira and Taz Taylor who are well known in the music industry and especially their subgenre and niche of sad boy music pretty much giving it the same effect as a large feature from like say Lil Baby or something like that so it really increases the likelihood of someone clicking on the song and even liking it, especially because the production is such high quality. The channel placements that Internet Money uses primarily is promoting sounds because that is a sad boy music channel, has over a million subscribers, and all of the artists that Internet Money has signed lately have been on this channel. Repeated times. Other channels they have connects with are pretty much every single YouTube channel that's really big. I know they've been on World Star, Elevator, maybe even Astari. And with consecutive placements on these channels, the artist is bound to blow up, or at least just get checked out by somebody whereas a lot of the times many of these artists are overlooked just because they don't have a cool name or just nobody knows who they are now the affiliation part of this step is pretty much the same thing as the YouTube channel placements however it's more on a personal level and on the different social media platforms than YouTube although it does include YouTube for example Ian Dior was shouted out and his music was used on phase members like Tifu, Banks, Rice Gum, and other big YouTubers whether this was organic or not the affiliation and or cosign whatever you want to call it definitely helps in gaining the following of the gamer community since these are such big names additionally the same concept can be applied to Nick Mira and Taz Taylor in general in that these artists just being affiliated with Taz Taylor and Nick Mira and internet money they're already getting a huge boost within that community this exposure also greatly increases the likelihood of them being connected with people already in the industry because Taz Taylor and Nick Mira are already known within this small circle of the successful entertainers. For instance, Ian Dior already has a feature with Trippy Red and it's only been a couple months. Now again, as I mentioned in the last video, what you can do to replicate this whole YouTube channel placement and affiliation is to research YouTube channels and pick about five to six channels where you're gonna post your music every single time you drop a song and consecutively drop on these channels at least 10 times. Also, drop the songs on a weekly to bi-weekly basis so that the channel fan base starts getting familiar with your name much quicker. If you drop every month or so, people are going to forget about the name and then see it again and be like, where did I hear that from? Or not even remember it. By the 10th time, I almost guarantee that they will see your name and know who it is, especially if you do it in a 10 week period and you drop 10 songs on this channel. If you do a 10 week package, the channel might also give you a discount if you pay up front. Okay, and the last step of the five step process is organic growth. This occurs when the artist has already accumulated a large fan base and has probably already surpassed Nick Mira and Taz Taylor in followers on any of the social media platforms. This step is mainly composed of maintenance and repetition of the last three steps in the process, which includes making sure the songs, aesthetic, and social media posts of the artist are on point, sticking around internet money, Taz Taylor, Nick Mira, and all the other artists that are affiliated with them and 
in the channel and affiliation placements of every single song they drop. This ensures that they will maintain their relevance within the community of sad boy music or you know SoundCloud hip hop. But now they have a whole other factor that's contributing to their career, which is the social media platform algorithms. Now that these artists have a large following on pretty much all social media platforms, these applications will push them organically in the algorithms. For example, Ian Dior will post, it will almost 100% make it onto the explore page because it has such high engagement. Additionally, since all of the songs of these artists have a lot of streams on them, Spotify's algorithm will pick up the statistics of the songs and most likely put them in algorithmic playlists for new users to discover their music. And finally, other small YouTube channels will also want to post these songs on their channels because they want to be hip to and be posting the newest and best music. And all of these applications do such things so they can maximize the consumer experience. When people are on an explore page, they give people what they want. A post has high engagement, so it must be good in Instagram's eyes or the song on Spotify has a lot of streams. It's most likely really good and a lot of people will like it. And the more Instagram and Spotify recommends posts and songs and people actually like it, the more these people will like the app because they discovered a new artist and everybody likes discovering new artists. So obviously you guys are probably far from this step given that you don't have that many followers. I mean, I'm not even there at this point. But what you can do to prepare yourself for this is just keep your engagement on all social media platforms as high as possible. This means don't buy followers because that'll only lower your engagement since these botted followers can't like your posts. And as I mentioned before, test what things work on all your social media platforms. If you post a picture of you at the skate park or something and you got like two times the likes that you normally get, then start going to the skate park more and taking pictures. Also, a quick tip is that whenever you include your face in the picture, Instagram's algorithm reads this. And since the human brain reacts more to another human's face in a picture, it generally get more engagement and likes. Additionally, Instagram and all these other platforms are promoting video content because it is more engaging and it increases the time that the consumer will be on the platform because most of the time people will stay on a video longer before they swipe up than on a picture. And the more time a consumer is on the platform, the more money in the application's pockets. So just repeat the process, mixing and matching different songs, sounds, aesthetics, pictures, and hone your craft and develop it until you start generating a buzz for yourself. So that completes the five step process of internet money strategy on how they break new artists. Internet money is basically a machine led by Taz Taylor and Nick Mira that can and does blow up artists using organic methods of their already thriving fan base that came about from their prior successes. So if you liked the video, make sure to like it, subscribe, stay tuned for more proven marketing strategies for smaller artists. I'll be back very soon. Peace out, cloudy people. You know what I'm saying? Hurry, hurry, hurry.